So I've got the rubber bumpers for the cam chain adjuster take-up shoe mounted in the head. And this adjuster goes in like this. You see the metal plate goes to the rear. You can see, perhaps see the wear mark where the plunger pushes against that metal plate and pushes this mechanism into the cam chain. And that sits just like that. So when the head is dropped, it will capture this against the rubber bumpers. These two rubber bumpers are already in place and they'll be captured between, uh, well the head gas go over the top of it and then it'll be captured with the head. So now we have all the uh, adjusters and bumpers in place drop the cylinder head gasket on and then the head can go on. So at this point, about ready to drop the head gasket in place, I rotated the crank and brought uh, number one and number four pistons to top dead center by aligning the T or top mark down here in the window because I needed those, I needed to know what position those cylinders are in so when I put the cams in, everything is going to align correctly. So I've got one and four top dead center. I touched up the assembly lube in each of the four cylinders. I did a complete rotation and touched up the assembly lube because some of it has settled down. Um, and I redistributed it uh, for the pistons. And of course, I cleaned everything really well. I know I'm anal retentive about it cleaning, but in my opinion, uh, it's critical uh, on an assembly like this, a relatively complex engine, any engine for that matter, really. So here's the here's the uh, head gasket, and I'll go ahead and put that in place. So I'll remove the brass tube. You have to keep in mind that the head gaskets are directional as well, and they're not symmetrical. So where my left pointer finger is, the index finger is, is the front of the block. This isn't difficult at all. There. What I'm going to do at this point is I'm just going to use that wire. I'm no longer going to use the copper tube that I had earlier. I'm just going to use the wire to hold the chain up out of the way for now and make sure that I get this nestled down the way I want it. So we've got the head gasket installed, made sure it was clean, and again it is directional. And I just dropped it right down, slipped the cam chain up through the middle of it, hooked it over the uh, piece of wire I left in place. I did pull the brass tube out at this point. I won't use that anymore. And uh, everything's pretty well aligned, so we're about ready to drop the head down. One thing to note that some head gaskets are, have a, a top and a bottom. In fact, the original Kawasaki gasket that came off this engine was labeled top. This aftermarket gasket that I've got in here right now had no markings on it at all. So I looked it over and didn't really see a lot of difference from one side to the other. So I just used my best discretion in terms of how to place it uh, in terms of a, a top or a bottom. Here comes the tricky part, because the cylinder head is heavy, and I've got to get a number of things lined up. My primary concern is the cam chain, making sure, since this is not captured at this point, um, I've got to pay attention to a couple of different things at the same time. So this is, uh, this is going to be a little work. Before I go any further, I thought I'd explain something. Since this head is heavy, and I work alone most of the time, you have to get creative sometimes to figure out the best way to do things. So what I did is I took a piece of 2x2 two two and wrapped it in clean, an old clean t-shirt of mine, rested across the top of the block, 
and it was just the right depth to allow me to capture the studs and start feeding them up in the cylinder head, but at the same time keep it elevated enough that I can get in there and fish the cam chain up through and get it through the tunnel here. And once I have that done, then I can figure out my next step in terms of getting this out so I can lower the um, head back onto the block. do take this put a bend in it this is just soft soft copper wire fish that up through like that gasket so that when you pull your chain up you won't damage anything. At this point I'm satisfied that the chain, the cam chain, safe. Poke it around here so it doesn't come off. Make sure everything looks good. Now comes the tricky part. I've got to lift the head just enough and that I can slide that 2x2 two two out. without disturbing anything in the process. So what I think I'm going to do is just get my hand under it. The thing that it is. like that. And I've got the cam chain secured, so that's not going anywhere. I think we've got everything that we need. Take that new side make sure the head gasket looks good. All the way around. And it does. Here you can see how I've organized the components for the valve train, that being the buckets, the shims, the head bolts, and the washers. So cylinder one, two, three, and four, exhaust intake, exhaust intake, exhaust intake, exhaust intake. So I've kept the head uh, nuts and washers and buckets and shims for cylinder number one exhaust together. Same components for cylinder one intake, etc. That way I can put everything back exactly the way I got it. I've already cleaned the head nuts up and uh, the washers. So I'm getting ready to put those back on the, on the uh, engine. So I've gone ahead and dropped all the washers over the studs, starting on number one, working my way this way towards number four. I'm standing on the, obviously, the right side of the bike. So that's really the last uh, washer, head washer. Next, I need to install these cap nuts for the uh, 12 studs. So there's 12 of these. Again, I indicated I'd already cleaned these up. I wanted to speak for a moment about uh, applying or not applying any lubricant such as a light oil or a um, assembly lube or anti-seize to head studs. 
And there's, uh, there's a lot of schools of thought on that. There's several different ones. Depending on the application, I even subscribe to different thinking regarding use, whether to use some kind of lubricant on a headstead or not. Generally speaking, my experiences have taught me, as well as reading that I've done, most cases, there's probably exceptions, but most cases, if you've got clean, dry threads, which I do here, these have all been cleaned, they're dry, as well as the head nuts, you generally on a head bolt or a head type arrangement such as this, don't use an assembly loop or uh, oil or anything of that nature, uh, including anti-seize. So though I'm a big fan of anti-seize in most applications, this is one of them, since these have to be torqued fairly precisely, this would be one of those applications where I will assemble them dry. So I will not use any lubricant of any kind on these uh, assemblies here since the threads are clean and dry. They're not corroded, they're not rusty, and uh, I don't believe the factory ever used assembly loop either. So I'll go through now and attach these finger tight all the way across. So the next thing we need to talk about, folks, is torquing of head bolts. I've already gone ahead and torqued uh, the 12 cap nuts, like you see here, the outside two on the number four cylinder. I've already done that. And the reason I'm not showing that on camera is that's pretty basic. And there's a lot of material and information out on YouTube and on the internet on how to torque bolts properly. But I thought I would uh, describe for you a couple of things since I'm not actually going to show the process. It's typical for many engines of this type. You uh, typically torque in two stages. The recommended book settings for this engine is to torque in two phases. The first phase would be to 18 foot-pounds. Here's the torque wrench that I use. Uh, it's a Craftsman, so it's a pretty well-made unit. It's 14 millimeter head bolts or head nuts. Six point socket, which I tend to use more of than 12 point, uh, with a little extension, and it fits in here just fine. Uh, first phase using a pattern, which I'll go through in just a moment, a uh, certain sequence of uh, torquing that is, you do certain bolts or certain nuts in, in a certain pattern to draw the head down equally. So the first round is to torque them using the sequence to 18. Once that's done, you go back through and then you uh, do the second pass to 28 foot-pounds. There is a range in the books, usually it's four or five pounds. I usually go for the middle of the range. So I'm on 18 first pass, 28 on the second, using the same pattern of tightening each time. And when you tighten the bolts, typically when you're, when you're, you're drawing up the last round, in other words, if I was at 28 foot-pounds, and I wanted to finish it, I would do a double click. In other words, I would do a, like that. And then I'd move on to the next one and do the same thing. These are already torqued, and this is well below 28 foot-pounds, so it's gonna click out very quickly, like that. Uh, so that's really all there is to torquing. Follow your sequence, follow your foot-pound recommendation from the, the service manual or the manufacturer, and you'll be just fine. There are two last bolts that I need to put in. There's a cap screw that goes down the front of the tunnel here and the rear of the tunnel there, and I'll talk about that you know, a little bit later on. Right now, we're going to go to the service manual, and I'll show you the sequence chart for the process to use to torque the head.